Well, let's follow Mansour on this. It seems to be something very interesting, this campaign, because here you have Barack Obama, who presents himself and accurately as a 21st century figure, a fresh figure, as John F. Kennedy was in 1960, with his um, really global background and his heritage and where he's lived. And he's a Democrat, progressive, let's say, and yet he is the one who talks more strongly about protecting American jobs, uh, criticizing globalization. Here's John McCain of the Republican Party, who are much more, I won't use the word nativist, but uh, that who is 100% for free trade and globalization. You think it would be the other way around, but this is what we have. I'm not gonna ask you to explain all of this politically, but uh, what do you see happening um, if Obama, to answer the question, were elected uh, in terms of the US and our engagement with the rest of the world in issues such as globalization, trade, things like that? Does he have any choice? Would he have any choice? You know, I, I work with people from all kinds of countries, uh, usually business people. And uh, the kinds of descriptions that I hear in their eyes are very similar to what you just described. Um, one way of looking at uh, uh, Senator Obama is, in, in the eyes of foreigners, uh, a smiling protectionist mm -hmm. versus a grumpy free trader, which is <laughs> the image of uh, Senator McCain. I'm just yes, no. sharing with you the, the image that I've, uh, that's been communicated to me. Um, so that is not lost on, on the uh, business people I deal with. However, they're not convinced they may be wrong, but they're not convinced that Senator Obama will embark on a nationalistic or uh, protectionist uh, strategy. And the fact that uh, Obama is a, an unusual, a, an unconventional candidate in many fronts in itself is a uh, cause for uh, applause and uh, positive attitudes. Good time for a few more questions. Can um, I? Uh, go ahead, Ted, yes. Please. I know a little bit about politics. <laughs> oh! <laughs> They're here. Please. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't believe Obama is an out-and-out -out protectionist. I think that any Democratic nominee for the last 40 years or more has had to pay attention to his base, and that includes labor unions. And labor unions, by nature, are more protectionist than any other segment of the economy because of the competition from uh, cheap wages around the world. Although there, I would point out to you, Garrick, uh, that I don't think I saw anywhere on the uh, agenda for this uh, conference and probably not enough on the agendas, Monsieur, at your school is the new phenomenon of globalization, which are the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations, interest groups on a global scale. And yes, they irritate a lot of people. Who elected them, everybody says. But the point is they have some influence. They are gaining politically in their respective countries. They are lobbying at the United Nations. And I think that an international figure, which is what Obama is, his father was from Kenya. He had a childhood in Indonesia and Hawaii. He understands the inevitability of globalization better than uh, anyone else. So yes, he's going to pay attention to members of organized labor who are not willing to be free traders who say, well, if you don't, uh, if, if you've been working in the steel industry, you're not gonna be producing steel anymore. You should move to India. And uh, the American uh, worker is not happy with that answer. Or if you've been working in textiles, well, why don't you just move to Thailand? American labor is uh, not that mobile, and they want some adjustments and some assistance to compensate 
equity adjustments that uh, globalization has, uh, has brought. So I understand why Obama is uh, not an out-and-out -out free trader with no uh, conditions attached to the, uh, to the trade, just as I think conditions on the environment ought to be attached, as well as conditions on labor standards. He'll see when he's elected and he's going to be. A couple more. <laughs>